Okay, so in this problem, we're going to de determine the x and y coordinates of the centroid of the shaded area. Now, uh, there are a couple of ways to doing this. Um, you can see this as uh, one entire shape like this. If you count this as one entire filled in shape, and then subtract this area from the triangular area and uh, do the summation of um, of its centroids. You could do it that way. Um, but there is another uh, faster approach to doing this. So there is, we can uh, make our cross sections with respect to Y here. And so that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to do this, make a cross section to the y. The thickness is dy here, therefore. And uh, we need to find what this uh, equation is. We know it's a linear e equation of some sort. We just need uh, two things here. We need a, a y-intercept and a slope. So let's find what the slope is first. Uh, how can we do that? Well, we need two points uh, on this line, so we, we can clearly see that there are two endpoints here. That would be 0, 0.5, 0 down here, this point. And then this point up here is 1, 1. And so we can go ahead and do the famous slope equation, the changes in y divided by the changes in x. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So the slope I'm going to denote as m is equal to 1 minus 0. It's the change in y divided by the change in 0, or the change in x, which is uh, 1 minus 0.5. And we should get the slope to being uh, 2. And so with that in mind, let's go ahead and... Uh, Keep this in mind, I'm going to write it up here, m equals 2. And so, now we need to find the y-intercept. So, uh, remember our uh, equation of a point slope is y equals mx plus b. And uh, b is our y-intercept that we need to solve for. And all we need is a slope and a coordinate on our line. Uh, to help us solve for that intercept. So in this case, I'll choose uh, our coordinate 1, 1. So I'll replace x and y with 1 here. So we should have something like this. And then b should be coming out to be uh, negative 1. So now that we have our slope and our y-intercept, now we can uh, replace this equation with uh, our point slope. So this should turn out to being y equals 2x minus 1. So we have our slope and our y-intercept. OK. Now, next thing I want to do is solve for k. Uh, k is an unknown multiplier that we want to solve for. So in order to do that, we need to know a point on this curve. So here we have 1, 1. So we can go ahead and replace y and x with 1. And uh, this should be fairly simple because since they're both 1, uh, k is going to just turn out to being 1. And that's great. Because uh, if anything is 1, that's it's always our best friend. Our best, Our really best friend is when anything is 0 most of the time. So we can actually just uh, kind of rewrite this as being y equals uh, x to the one-third power. Kind of make k invisible. Okay, so now let's go ahead and find our dA. So our dA, if we set this up, it should be um, this distance. And what is this distance? Well, it should be 
uh, this x minus this x. So in other words, if I make this, uh, I'll make it like x2 minus x1 times dy. Now what is x2? So this is our x2 right here. It's our biggest curve. Now if we go ahead and solve for x, we should go ahead and see that x2 is y plus 1 over 2. All I did was rearrange the uh, uh, algebraic manipulations. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this is x2. And then this should be uh, x1. So x1 is going to turn out to be, and now I can't erase for some reason. I'll just write it out here. x1 is equal to y cubed. I just uh, uh, cubed both sides of the equation to get x1. Okay, I'll rewrite that over here. So x1 is y cubed. All right, so now let's go ahead and replace that equation and to dA. So dA, we say to be, so x2, we have y plus 1 over 2 minus y cubed times dy. So now that we've done that, we have everything in terms of y. Now we can go ahead and integrate this piece to get our area. So from 0 to 1, adding up all of these rectangles uh, of this uh, cross-sectional area that we have here. And if we go ahead and solve for this integral, um, we should get, uh, if we go ahead and evaluate this, the area, I'll denote this as the area, is equal to uh, y squared over 4 uh, plus y over 2 minus y fourth over 4 evaluated from zero, 0 to 1. And so if we go ahead and evaluate this, we go ahead and get uh, 1 fourth plus 1 half minus 1 fourth. And so we should see that our, uh, our area, otherwise known as our sum of all of our DAs, is going to turn out to being 1 half. I'll go ahead and circle this right here because we're going to need this for later. Okay, so now that we have this piece of information, I can go ahead and erase all of this right over here. And the next thing we want to do is solve for our x coordinate of the centroid and our y coordinate of the centroid. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find what x bar and y bar are. So x bar is going to meet somewhere along here to this centroid. And then y bar will meet somewhere over right here. Okay, so what are x bar and y bar? Well, our x bar should be it should be the curve the distance to our curve of x1 so it should be x1 that distance plus half of our base that we've denoted in our area so it should be uh, plus half of this distance so it should be um, I'll write it out here one half uh, y plus one half minus y cubed 
Now that's just basically saying x2 minus x1. So that's our x bar right here. And we can go ahead and simplify this. If I go ahead and replace x1 with our equation here, we get uh, y cubed plus uh, 1 half y plus 1 half minus y cubed. And actually, remember, so this distance is not just uh, this uh, x2 minus x1, but it's halved because it's we're meeting halfway of this base. So I did forget to uh, mention that. So this distance is uh, divided by 2. Now, let's go ahead and simplify this. This x bar is going to be, if we go ahead and simplify, it should go ahead and tell us that it's uh, uh, y cubed over 2 uh, plus 1 fourth of y plus 1 fourth. And that is our x bar. And I'll, I'll leave it like that. So that is our x bar right here. Now our y bar is simply just going to be y. That's great. That should simplify things a lot when we're doing our uh, y coordinate of the centroid. So let's go ahead and uh, solve for our x coordinate. I'll write this down here. So it's the uh, sum of all of our x bars times dA divided by the sum of our dA's. Okay, so let's go ahead and replace everything that we have. Now I did erase our dA. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that it's going to be our uh, y plus 1 over 2 minus y cubed it's going to be this guy right here so our x bar we said to being uh, now our limits are again 0 to 1 adding up all these uh, centroids with respect to y across the y-axis, 0 to 1, and it's going to be, if we replace our x-bar, we should get this, y, y cubed over 2 plus uh, 1 fourth y plus 1 fourth times our dA, and our dA is this, so it's going to be y over 2 plus 1 half minus y cubed times dy. Over the integral of our da's. Now I'm going to go ahead and foil this out. And uh, you guys can do that on your own. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. So if I go ahead and foil this out, it should simplify to being uh, this. Um, should be negative y to the 6th over 2 uh, plus y squared over 8 plus y to the 4th plus 1 eighth dy. And all of this is going to be over our integral of dA. All right. Now let's go ahead, let's evaluate. So let's evaluate our integral. We have negative y to the seventh over 14 plus y cubed over 24. 
plus y squared over 8 plus y over 8. Evaluated from 0 to 1 all over our integral of dA. And if we evaluate this, uh, just go ahead and plug in 1. Uh, this should all sum out to being... Uh, I'm going to write this as a decimal. It's going to be 0. 0.4404. That is our x-coordinate of our centroid. Now our y-coordinate, let's go ahead and solve for that. It's going to be our y-bar, which we just said is y times... our da and our da is we wrote it up here uh y plus one over two minus y cubed times dy y plus one over two minus y cubed times dy over our da's all right so if we go ahead and evaluate this integral, uh, we can FOIL this y in, and then uh, we separate all of our unlike terms, and we should get this top or the numerator to being, when we evaluate the integral, it should be uh, not y over 6. It's y cubed over 6 plus y squared over 4 minus y fifth over fifth over five from zero to one over our da's and if we evaluate this from zero to one and then uh, divide by our da which is uh, one half our y coordinate should be 0.433 I'll simplify it to uh, three significant figures. Okay, so what does this mean now? Now that we've solved for our x and y coordinates of our centroid, so let's go ahead and visually plot this. So 0.4404 for the x coordinate, it should be somewhere close to 0.5 along the x axis. So it should be somewhere around here. And then 0.433, that should be maybe somewhere around here, close to 0.5 on the y-axis. So our centroid is meeting somewhere around here. This is our centroid of coordinates 0.4404. Comma, erase that, 0.433. This is our solution set. All right, thank you for watching, and I uh, hope you learned something from this video.